Okay, good evening. Uh, we are about to start with um, these extra hours that we're gonna help our students and we're gonna wait for them, right? Okay, let me see. Okay, we're gonna wait for the rest of the students. Uh, I just share uh, the ID and the link for this meeting. Okay, we're gonna wait for them. But I'm gonna share um, this. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the students, but at the moment we are talking about the past tense, right? The past tense, uh, the past tense have um, a lot of uh, things that you can basically uh, work with, and some of them are the verb, the verb in the past simple tense will be uh, was and were was and were remember you can say it in the negative way uh wasn't weren't yep okay then uh we uh we were talking about the auxiliary the auxiliary you can use do or does in the present but in the past will be did and also uh let me see we can have the real verbs these regular verbs are the ones who add ed at the end of the verb. Ed. Um, for example, want, wanted, and so on, right? Okay. And then we were talking about irregular verbs. The irregular verbs are the ones who basically uh, change sometimes its root. For example, it ate and so on. Okay, we saw this, this, and the negative way of all of this, right? Okay, we're gonna wait a while, and later on we are gonna continue uh, talking about this topic. Okay, when I wait for the students, right? Uh, because we, uh, I was sharing the password with them.
Okay, good evening, William. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Yeah, pues, excellent. <laughs> excellent, right? Tired. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but don't worry, uh, we're going to try to learn something new today, right? I don't know if you have questions. Eh, pues, quizás sobre este tema, el deal siempre como que hay un poquito de complication, complicación ahí. Uh, with deal. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ok. Ok, eh, let's see. We're gonna... A veces, quizás porque a veces cuesta, o sea, como que uno se confunde cuando poner el... el Ok. Es cuando llevaría al pasado al verbo. Ok. Bueno, no lo vamos a incluir. Por ejemplo, en la conversación, ¿vale? el diálogo que llevábamos, uh -huh. ya pusimos el, o sea, sí, respondimos, yes, I did, yeah. Pero tuvimos que, o sea, solo pusimos work. O sea, okay. ahí en esa parte. ¿vale? Ok, muy bien, William. Eh, I'm going to try to explain you this um, because of the time rate did. Tenemos did. Que puede ser dos cosas. Uh -huh. Number one will be um, a verb. Puede ser un verbo. And number two will be an auxiliary. Como auxiliar, puede, puede ser usado en dos ocasiones. Una, como questions. Y la otra, como negative. Negar algo. Veamos algunos ejemplos. Como verbo. Eh, un verbo es una acción y la acción de did ¿qué significa did? hacer en pasado hice digamos hice ok muy bien veamos un ejemplo eh, puede de decirme un ejemplo con did como verbo sería I did homework my homework I did my homework I did my homework ok that's it Ok, I did my homework. I did my homework. Entonces acá está muy bien conjugada. I did my homework, right? Yo hice mi tarea. Hice, did, hice. Como un verbo. Ahora veamos como auxiliar, cómo funciona. Si es Por ejemplo, ahí, eh, ahí. Por ejemplo, cuando podríamos puedo utilizar... Las, las, por ejemplo, las frases, la, cuando uno hace preguntas con el, por ejemplo, what, what did. Yeah, what yeah, sure. Did, se puede utilizar. Is WH word. Ah, sí, la puede utilizar. En este caso, William, eh, como acá, digamos, tenemos, I did my homework. Uh -huh. Yo hice mi tarea. Preguntémosle a ella si hizo la tarea. Vamos a hacer una pregunta. ¿Sería? Eh, ella hizo la tarea, dice. Ajá, pero como pregunta. Sería, did she do homework? Ok, ok. Did she do? Ah, did she do? Uh -huh. The homework. The homework. The homework. Ok, this is a question, right? Entonces, uh, acá, William, este. No, no oh, significa yeah. nada. ¿qué uh -huh. Eso lo está diciendo que es una pregunta. Entonces, uh -huh. did, va antes. Ah, es una pregunta. Pero acá... Como ya no significa nada, sino que una pregunta hay que poner un verbo. Did she do the homework? Ah, hizo ella la tarea. Entonces acá usted puede agregar una WH word. Of course you can do it. Why? Podría ser why. ¿Qué es why? Eh, why es... No me acuerdo. <risas> ok, why es por qué. ¿Por qué? Ah, okay. Entonces acá, ¿por qué? Porque ella no hizo la tarea, sería. Ah, porque ella hizo la tarea. Ah, porque es? ella hizo. Ah, perdón, porque ella hizo la tarea. Hizo la tarea. Entonces acá ya ponemos WH word. Pero si usted nota, did siempre va antes del pronombre. Cambia esa posición. ¿Ya? Yeah. O sea que se puede utilizar el. Esa, el los, los, las palabras WH, por ejemplo, las yeah, yeah, sure, sure, you can do it. Pueden utilizarse. Solo que esas WH word eh, se utilizan when you want to know something in a specific, right? 
cuando usted necesita saber algo en específico. ¿ya? Ahora veamos la misma oración en negativo. ¿Cómo sería que yo no hice mi tarea? I didn't my homework. I didn't my homework. Como acá está siendo un negativo, necesitamos negar un verbo. Ah. I didn't do yeah do my homework yeah sure do my homework like this right like this mm -hmm. así básicamente como esto entonces eh, se comprende la diferencia como verbo solo ponemos I did my homework did es un verbo correcto como auxiliar funciona de dos formas. Una question or una negative expression. En una question podría ser why did she do the homework? Pero ¿qué pasa acá? Como esto no significa nada, solo es un auxiliar para formular la pregunta, tenemos que poner un verbo. Y el verbo es en su forma original. Correcto. Lo mismo pasa. Ah, ahí, ahí donde yo tenía esa duda con las preguntas más que todo. Ajá. Ok, that's good. Y lo mismo pasa en negación. Uh -huh. do. Tenemos sí, que negar y poner un verbo al que vamos a negar. ¿Ya? Uh, o sea, prácticamente, o sea, como en negación o en, en pregunta, no, respuesta no, no, no significa nada, ¿verdad? Ya, yeah, sure. Entonces, uh, ok. Utilizar un verbo. Ok, forget something. Olvidar algo acá. Eh, si a usted le hacen esta pregunta, si solo escondir, usted puede contestar de una forma corta. Correcto. Answer. Entonces, si usted me dice, eh, what, eh, sí que el why, did she do the homework? Una respuesta corta podría ser, yes, I did. Yes. Como estamos hablando de ella, sería, ah, yes, she did. Yeah. Like this, yes, she did. Eh, usted me dice, mire, hizo la tarea ella. Yes, she did. Ahí, si no la hizo, no. She didn't. Yeah, no, she Not or she didn't, whatever, right? Pero si usted quiere dar una eh, respuesta más larga, vamos a poner un ejemplo acá. Um, eh, acá estamos preguntando why. This is an specific reason. Uh -huh. razón ¿Por qué no hizo ella la tarea? ¿Por qué hizo ella la tarea? Entonces usted contesta because. Porque, uh -huh. Because she needs. Good, great. Eh, porque ya necesita buenas notas. Entonces ya damos una eh, respuesta, pero más larga. Entonces usted puede hacerlo así o puede hacerlo así. Pero por eso ahorita no estamos poniéndole WH word para comprender. Ah, para que no. Ah, porque estamos viendo la forma más. Eh, más ahí simple, right? Más simple, ajá. ¿eh? Yeah, sure. Okay, I don't know, uh, William, if you got more questions? No. Solamente. Okay, that's good. And, um, okay, uh, did you work on the homework? Todavía no las he hecho. <laughs> okay, okay. Pero sí, este, ya voy a ver, quiero ver, ahorita que termine, voy a empezar a hacerla. Uh -huh. Okay, that's good. Uh, work on the homework. If you got more questions, you can ask me, right? We have uh, one minute more. Okay, este. Y aquí, o sea, me, me quedo esperando o solo, solo me salgo? Eh, eh, okay, okay. Ah, no, Creo me... que no hay nadie más. Okay. No. Uh, okay, that's it. Ok, eh, ahí los chicos van entrando así, dependiendo de cómo les toque. Así que eh, la programación que les dieron. Así que aquí voy a esperarlos. Ok, William, you don't have any more questions? No, solamente. Ok, if you don't have any more questions, that's it. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Go to the platform. <laughs>
Okay, I'm gonna wait for somebody else. A couple of minutes more. Okay, good evening, Marlon. Ya casi good night, teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Está pesada esta hora, teacher. Yeah, uh, you know, sometimes we feel like I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> like this, right? Okay. Sí, ya. Bueno. Okay, Marlon, uh, this session is really special. It's just for you. We're gonna have 10 minutes. And uh, if you got a question, if you got a doubt about the topic that we were discussing during the classes before, you can ask me. I'm gonna be here for you, right? Okay, teacher. Fíjese que, bueno, todas las clases, sí, la gente entendió y todo. Lo que creo yo que ya más que todo depende de uno el estar uh -huh. eh, pues practicándolo, ¿verdad? Yeah. Tal vez yo yo pregun yo lo que quería preguntarle era eh, en base a cómo hacer para poder, si usted cree que en un año así como estamos en este módulo podríamos realmente, ¿qué tips nos podría dar para poder aprender más, verdad? Ok, ok. ¿Cómo hacer, verdad? Ok. Porque yo, yo, no, yo no, lo último que llevé en inglés fueron, hijo, ya tenía más de 10 años que no veía inglés. Ah, ok. That, that's too much, right? Ok, uh, Marlon. Uh, basically, as you see, uh, these uh, topics are related to the works, right? Estos temas son efectivamente para el trabajo. Uh, so that's why uh, we're gonna get something like this. Vocabulary, uh, let me see, hands, um, questions, answer, um, okay, in Merlin, what, what, what happened here is the next, right? A, if you want to speak English or learn a little bit quickly, you have to handle your knowledge in a better way. For example, at the beginning of the class, all the time I show you an extra vocabulary. Se ha anotado eso. Damos un vocabulario extra at the beginning of the class. That's for you. Eso es para ustedes. No está en el libro, pero él lo agregó para que aumentemos el knowledge ahí. Ok, uh, <clears throat> luego tenemos el que vamos a ver algunos tense, tiempos, en in English. Por ejemplo, eh, ahorita estamos viendo el tiempo. Pasado. Pasado, yeah, really good. Eh, hace unas clases vimos el tiempo present y no nos dimos cuenta porque era así práctico. Entonces, eh, right now we are talking about the past. Entonces, eh, a veces hablamos de algunas questions and answers. Y tenemos los conectores. Los conectores. ¿Cuáles son los conectores? En... Los, Ajá. Los que, sería lo que como las frases que entrelazan oraciones. Yeah, sure, sure. Entonces, si usted se aprende esas frases, esas palabritas, eh, créanme que usted va a mezclar presente con pasado, dos ideas, eh, dos oraciones, cuatro oraciones y va a sonar un poco mejor. Eh, por ejemplo, si yo eh, le digo, ¿qué hizo ayer en su trabajo? What did you do yesterday in your work? Usted va a pensar en las actividades que hizo que puede expresarlo con los verbos en pasado. 
Entonces comienza a describir, pero esas oraciones las entrelaza con en, also, in addition. Eh, uh, dígame dos e intente entrelazarlas con los connectors. Ok. Eh, I take a bus, tomé el bus. Ok. Eh, I... Bueno, tomé el desayuno, breakfast, I... Ajá. Uh -huh. Like this, right? No me recuerdo. Eh, ¿Cómo se dice? Algunas veces tomo café. Ok, son... Sometimes. I drink... Coffee. Coffee. Ok, con esas tres oraciones. Esa las maneja muy bien. Eh, aquí ponemos took porque yo le pregunté algo de ayer. ¿no? Pero aquí hay una mezcla de dos pasados y un presente. ¿Por qué? Porque esto es algo general. Ah, eh, yo desayuné, eh, tomé el bus y algunas veces tomo café. Pero acá se, escucha, se va a escuchar en presente. ¿Sí? Entonces okay. es una mezcla. ¿Cómo me diría todo eso entrelazándolo con los connectors? Vamos a ver. Quiero escuchar. So, yeah, bueno, aquí. I have breakfast. Ok. Also, also ¿verdad? Also. Yeah. Also, also, I talk the bus. Ok. And sometimes I drink coffee. Ok, really good. Right now you sound better, right? Y usted nota cómo se escucha mejor y vamos hablando más. Ya. Yeah. Nos lo vamos conectando, conectando nuestras ideas que ya tenemos. No nos compliquemos a veces poniendo conocimiento que todavía no tenemos o no manejamos. ¿Ya? Ok. De esa forma vamos a hablar efectivamente. If you see, uh, in our country, eh, fortunately, we need the basic level, right? En nuestro país ocupamos el básico, pero básico bien manejado. ¿Ya? Uh, but if you uh, travel to another country, what you're going to need is the immediate level. Es nivel intermedio. Para pedir algo, alguna comida en un restaurante, hablar con alguien y pedir una opinión. Entonces, eso estamos muy cerca de lograrlo. Just we need to practice our knowledge, right? Okay, I don't know if you have more questions. Mm, pues, ahorita... Ah. Teacher, do, dos preguntitas. Yeah. Cuando usted dice amazing, ¿qué significa en sí? ¿Qué significa? ¿Asombroso, yeah. maravilloso? Como... Yeah, asombroso, genial. Ah, ok, ok. okay, yeah. okay. Ajá, ¿y la otra? Eh, la otra, es que la otra no me recuerdo cuando usted dice eh, pichao, picheo, no, no sé. Ok, ok. Ah, ok. Okay, let me see. It could be like a check out or check it out. No. No, no, no. No. Cuando lo diga le voy a preguntar en la clase, ¿no? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes I, I say something and you have to learn it, right? Eh, algo muy aquí relevant. Eh, Marlon, aprovechando acá el time. Eh, tenemos esto, es muy útil y lo uso bastante. Este let. Let's, let's practice. Y lo que sea que vamos a practicar. Ese let's nos está incluyendo. ¿sí? Es dejar hacernos algo. Entonces, pero en, nosotros en nuestro idioma lo vamos a traducir como practiquemos, nos incluimos. Practiquemos. ¿Sí? Hey, let's practice together. Practiquemos juntos. Let's practice together, right? Eh, también podría ser así, let uh, go. Esto sí es lo más común, let's go. Vamos. Yeah. Oh. Eh, podría ser let listen to a reggaeton, for example. Hey, let's listen to reggaeton. Escuchamos reggaeton, ¿sí? Nos incluimos. Entonces, este let 
que es sumamente importante. Right? Ok, Marco, eh, unfortunately, time is over. Okay, thank you. Good night, teacher. Ok. Thank you. Good night. Hoy sí, good, okay, bueno, good night. No good night, estoy good evening. Yeah, yeah, sure. Have a good night. So. Ok, bye bye. Ok, good evening, Rodrigo. Hi, teacher. How are you? I am a little bit tired. Ah, really? You look sleepy. <laughs> Okay, uh, Rodrigo, uh, this uh, special section that we're going to have here, uh, this is that for you, right? Uh, I'm going to be here for you. I don't know if you have uh, questions, doubts about the class, or uh, comments, you can do it right now, and I'm going to be here for you. Okay, go ahead. Let's see. No setting. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is clear. Uh, sí, más o menos. Okay, I don't know if you have a doubt with some topics from yesterday class or the last week classes. I don't know. Quizás de, de los... Casi, casi no me puedo ver las pronunciaciones de, como por ejemplo, aquí quiero que lo note. Como que se me olvida, más que todo, cuando ocupamos, se ocupan palabras que se omiten algunas letras. Ok, por ejemplo. Aqu aquella vez que hice uh -huh. un ejemplo. En el que puse maintenance. Ah. Okay. Me, no sé cómo se dice. Me. Maintenance. Maintenance. Es. Ok. Ok. Eh, eh, Rodrigo, uh, we got an advantage for you. Tenemos una ventaja ahí con usted. Básicamente, eh, you got a previous knowledge in your mind. Eh, you speak your word perfectly. Eh, las palabras que se sabe las pronuncian muy bien. Las que no se sabe, ahí dudamos, pero eh, that's why I'm here for you in order to help you, right? Un tips. In English, um, as you see, es más fácil que el español, obviamente. But, hay algo eh, que nos confunde a nosotros. Nosotros estamos acostumbrados a que una palabra, así como se escribe, así se lee. In English, it's <coughs> Uh, in the other way around como esa palabra mantenimiento maintenance y se escribe maintain uh, maintenance uh, algo así ok pero se dice maintenance entonces la mayoría de palabras en inglés nunca se dicen como se escribe en el caso de uh, veamos otra um, let me see Uh, por ejemplo, eh, son times, right, que dice la gente, pero es sometimes, y por ahí eh, muchas otras. Entonces, eh, básicamente, if you don't know uh, the pronunciation of a word, you can ask me during the class, teacher, how can I say this word? And I'm going to be there for you, right? And um, I don't know if you got a a job with a, with a pronunciation of a special word during the course, you can ask me too. You can say, teacher, I don't understand this word and I'm going to try to help you, right? If I don't know because I don't know anything, eh, I'm going to tell you and I'm going to, you know, to figure it out that word. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eh, yep. Yeah. I don't know if you have more questions. Or that. Mm. Not clear. Aunque sí, so, eh, la vez, quiero ver, algunas, algunos momentos que yo creo y yo me considero así como que lo más difícil para mí es como el listening. Yeah, listening skill. Ajá, entonces, no sé si tal vez podemos... Ok. Yo, yo sé que casi, casi algunas palabras... No la vamos a entender, o quizás no, pero nos vamos a ir acostumbrando. 
si, no, si usted nos habla siempre en inglés. O sea, okay. para, para, que, ajá, para que nosotros nos vamos acostumbrando porque ese es mi problema, la verdad. Me cuesta mucho entender cuando, por ejemplo, lo, los, los audios yeah. que ponen. Eso sí, me, sí no es muy difícil para mí. Sí, sí, Pero okay. creo que es parte de ir uh, yeah. adecuando el oído, ¿verdad? Eh, eh, ir entrenando el oído. Ok, mm -hmm. ahí, with that case, uh, Rodrigo, we got a little problem with that because uh, right now we are at the beginner level, right? And um, you know a lot of things and you understand all or everything that I said. You understand in your mind. But some of you don't, right? Pero algunos de los otros chicos eh, no. Entonces, eh, how can I say this? Eh, I really like, you know, to start with um, some percent of the English at the beginning. Empiezo con un porcentaje, mm -hmm. luego lo vamos aumentando y lo vamos aumentando y así. Al principio les hablaba más español y lo vamos disminuyendo. En un momento en que les hablé, les hablé así inglés, español y todo. Ya la otra semana, sí, you're going to hear me, you know, like a 90% in English, right? Porque ya vamos a, tenemos un conocimiento previo. ¿Sí? Ok, that's good. Eh, uh, Rodrigo, you don't have any problem with the past simple tense? Creo que no. Okay. Creo que no. Y, y hace, bueno, cuando, cuando estuve más o menos viendo el, este tema hace, un, unos, hace unos meses, yep. creo que me traté de memorizar algunos, algunos verbos oh, y, yeah. los, y, los, y las reglas, por ejemplo, para cada, para los, los regulares. Yep. Y mm -hmm. creo que, que, que sí lo puedo manejar un poco. Okay, okay, that's good. Yeah, because uh, a tips for you, right? You are the ones of the, the speak English better than the rest of the class. Uh, so that's why you, what you need is to mix, you know, uh, some tenses, right? For example, present, past, future, simple present, and continue and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because um, you're gonna sound like a professional, right? In that way, because if if you want to uh, give us an opinion, you can do it. Uh, for example, teacher, I think, uh, in my opinion, that uh, this is not like that. It will be like this because uh, I saw in a book in this way. Y ahí mezclamos todos los tiempos. If you can do something like that with your knowledge y lo manejamos bien eh, you're going to improve really really quickly porque no tenemos mucho problema en pronunciación con usted eh, y en el caso tiene mucho conocimiento previo eh, y eso es genial así que solo necesitamos you know, to mix all of this information and try to handle in a good way really easy and fluent right ok dicho ok ok that's good that's the tip for you right Okay, uh, if you don't have any questions, uh, we got one minute more. I don't know if you want to say something. Ah, una pregunta. ¿Cuántos, cuántos beginner level tenemos? Okay, I think uh, we're going to have like a four, four level, right? ¿Y significa que después de este vamos para...? No, I mean it's six. Six. Six, six right? It's missing two. Okay, then you're gonna continue with the middle level. Uh, and then there you're gonna hear, you know, the teacher speak English uh, 100%. Okay. All the time. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's good, uh, Rodrigo. Thank you for being here. And yes. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.
Okay. Okay, students, uh, right now we are waiting for the last um, student. Um, but before to, to go with that student, I'm gonna show you a video because we need to, you know, um, show you something really interesting about the, uh, how to use the do, does, and don't because sometimes you get a problem with this. Okay, here we go, students. Try to listen if you watch this video. I, I would like that this can help you to understand in a really good way how to use this. Who does did done English grammar lesson? The word do appears a lot in English. This is because it can be a verb, as in the verb to do, which can be conjugated as do and does in the present tense, did in the past tense, and done as a past participle. Do can... Okay, I'm gonna share the screen again because I've got a little problem with this. Let me see, yeah. Also be an auxiliary verb in the form of do and does to make questions in the present tense and did to make questions in the past tense. Let's look at each one in more detail. We will start with the verb to do. As we have seen, the verb to do has four forms. Do, does, did, and done. Let's look at its form in the simple present tense. With the verb to do in the present tense, we say I do, you do, we do, they do, but we say he does, she does, it does, Let's look at some example sentences. I do my laundry on Saturdays. Do my laundry means I wash my clothes. Well, I put it in the washing machine. They do their chores when they arrive home. Chores are the housework you need to do, like washing the dishes, doing the vacuuming, etc. He does nothing all day. That's right, he is quite lazy. He does absolutely nothing. She does charity work when she has time. People that do charity work are superheroes. The simple past tense of do is did for all subjects. I did, you did, we did, they did, he did, she did, it did. Notice how there is only one form of the verb in the past tense, did. He did a magic trick. Yes, and everyone was amazed, wow. The baby did a fart. Yes, and the smell made everyone cry. How can such a cute thing produce something so rotten? I did my homework in record time. Yes, it only took me five hours instead of ten. She did ballet after school last year. This year, she's doing something different. The past participle of do is done. Remember that past participles are accompanied by a conjugation of the verb to have or to be, which means it is in the correct tense according to the subject. In general, have plus past participle is used with a perfect tense, and be plus past participle is with the passive voice. Let's look at some examples. I have done my homework. 
He has done a good job. These two sentences are in the present perfect tense because they have have or has before the past participle, done. The video will show you how it is done. The report was done on time. Here we used a conjugation of the verb to be before the past participle done. ¿Cansado de jugar lo mismo? Participa. Ok, really good. Uh, we're going to wait a couple of minutes more for the class of students. But before, I would like to share my uh, slide presentation about DIP, right? Okay, we get it this. Okay, we're gonna continue to watch the video. Uh, okay, here we go. I hope you can uh, learn something from this video. Verb. We sometimes use the verb do to replace a verb when the meaning is clear or obvious. This replacement is more common in informal spoken English. Have you done the dishes yet? Here, done means washed. I'll do the kitchen if you do the lawns. The first do means clean, clean the kitchen. The second do means mow, mow the lawns. Sometimes do, does and did are used as auxiliaries to make questions in English. Let's start with do and does. To make a question in the simple present tense in English, we normally put the auxiliary do or does at the beginning of the question before the subject. After the subject is the verb in its base form, which means the infinitive without to at the beginning. Look at this affirmative sentence. You speak English. How can we make this a question? We add do at the beginning, so it becomes do you speak English? You will see that we add do at the beginning when the subject is I, you, we, or they. But look at this affirmative sentence. He speaks English. Arabic. To make this a question, we say, does he speak Arabic? You can see that we add does at the beginning when the subject is he, she, or it. Notice how the letter S at the end of the verb in the affirmative sentence, because it is in third person, disappears in the question. That is because the verb is in the base form of the infinitive. Note, we don't use do or does in questions that have the verb to be or modal verbs, such as can, must, might or should. Let's look at the auxiliary did. To make a question in the simple past tense in English, we normally put the auxiliary did at the beginning of the question before the subject. And just like in the present tense, after the subject is the verb in its base form, which means the infinitive without to at the beginning. Look at this affirmative sentence. You lived in Spain. How can we make this a question? We add did at the beginning, so it becomes 
did you live in Spain? We use the verb form live and not lived because the auxiliary did shows that the question is in the past tense. Did is also used with he, she, and it. So with this affirmative sentence, she lived in Japan, to make it a question in the past tense, we say, did she live in Japan? Again, we use did for questions in the past, except with to be and modal verbs. Así que quieres aprender inglés. Aquí tienes tres mitos que... Okay. We're going to wait a couple of minutes more. We still have two minutes. Uh, I'm waiting for Daisy, but I have Daisy got a little problem with the internet connections because uh, today it's raining a lot there and here too. And so that's why we're going to... Uh, uh, to finish to watch that video. But at the moment, I'm going to show you this slide presentation. And in a while, I'm going to continue with the, with the video, right? Okay. Okay, we're gonna finish the video and later, I think that's it. That will be um, all of this for this session, right? Compare um, these questions. Do you speak English? Did you speak English? The only difference between a question in the present tense and the past tense is the first part, do or did. And look at these two questions. Does he speak Italian? Did he speak Italian? The only difference between a question in the present tense and the past tense when it refers to third person, he, she, and it, is the first part, does or did. Look at this question. Do you do exercises every day? Why are there two do's in this question? The first do is necessary because we're making a question in the simple present tense. The second do is from the verb to do. You do exercises. What happens if instead of you, we're asking about another person? Does she do exercises every day? We use does because it is necessary for simple present tense questions for third person. In this case, for she. Does she. Again, do appears because you do exercises. It appears as do and not does because the verb needs to be in the base form of the infinitive. Of course, in the past tense, you would say, did you do exercises yesterday? Did is an auxiliary, which is needed to make a question. Do is from the verb to do. Do and does for emphasis. Okay, um, okay, guys, I hope you can watch this video uh, later on. And uh, unfortunately, time is over. Uh, that's it for today's class. And keep in mind all the time you can ask me if I use Spanish sometime is because I would like to share all the information and acquire the meaning of that in Spanish too, because it's our mother tongue. But um, I would like to speak uh, in a um, higher percent in English, right? Because you really need it. And right now, I know already that you understand something that you um, 
to get something in your mind about the previous knowledge. So that's why I'm gonna try to do my best in order to teach you English. That's it for today's class. Bye bye and see you next week.